Jung very early suggested in a book called Flying Saucers, a, a modern myth of things seen in the sky that he published in 1948, that it was in fact um, a projection of the mass psyche, that it was uh, assimilable to the goals of alchemical uh, transubstantiation. He called it the rotunda, the scintilla, the spark, the spinning thing. And it is, it's all these things, but it is, it is the clue that we are somehow trapped inside some kind of artifice, that, that uh, the world that we're inside of is much more like a work of art than it is like the smooth-running mechanistic machine that Newtonian science describes. That description works very well for all low-grade phenomena up to about the level of the weather. But from there on, the, the notion that the world is simply, uh, you know, probabilistic processes following these various creodes of least resistance becomes very uh, untenable because each of us in our experience of being lives in a highly theatrical world. And what I mean by that is that you can see a woman at a great distance from you in class, in uh, opportunity, all of these things, and uh, you fall in love with this woman, and it's hopeless. But of course, as we all know, it's also inevitable. And that inevitability totally violates physics, because it really is hopeless. How is it then that each of our lives is a work of art, of unbelievable chance encounters, coincidences, and uh, wishes projected onto the world but never spoken and strangely fulfilled in the oddest ways? I think that it's because uh, the world is made of language and that if the Eastern conception that the universe is mind has any operational impact in the world, it will be through conceiving of mind as uh, the underlying, self-aware, self-active, world-forming grammar of being. So that the, the, what Freud called the superego, what I call the overmind, there have been different ways of talking about it, has to be seen not as a passive homeostatic controlling device, but actually as the most intelligent organization on this planet. And we are all only components of this, believing ourselves to be the highest expression of freedom but it is actually at the species level that organization is controlled. And that's why the emergence of ideas like the calculus or the invention of LSD or the steam engine, why these things have this curious property of being regulated from above. It's because the world is not nearly as chaotic and random as we suppose. We are actually trapped inside a giant organism. And it is not Gaia that's a much larger organism. We are trapped inside a large organism which is the human collectivity. And that's why we are such different monkeys because there is this uh, group mind which none of us is aware of or has ever perceived that is actually mediating uh, the human experience. And it is no more apprehendable to us than the group mind of an anthill is apprehendable to us. It can't be seen. What it is, is it's an interlocking set of conventions, linguistic uh, directions, uh, genetic components, assumptions, and uh, what, for lack of a better word, you would call innate tendencies. And these things, which we wear as, uh, as the clothing of our speciesood, are actually the constraints directing us first one way and then another. And if we want to take control of our destiny, we are going to have to rise into empathy with this overmind, this superego.